Some big changes may soon be coming to Palm Springs, from permanent housing for the homeless to possibly closing Palm Canyon Drive to traffic. I spoke today with Mayor Jeff Coors. Jeff, it's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Peter. The council unanimously approved using $3 million of a state grant to turn an existing hotel in the city into permanent housing for the homeless. Tell us about that and why was this needed? Um, sure. So we received funding from the state for permanent solutions for homelessness. So once people are housed, they're no longer homeless. And this is permanent housing. So the units will be converted into apartments. So they, there'll be studios for individuals, but there'll be multi-bedroom for families, and there'll be um, units for seniors, and there'll be 24-7 support on the site, on the location. And, you know, Palm Springs has the highest number of homeless in the Coachella Valley. And the biggest problem we have is people who are getting services, people with case managers, don't have a place to live. They can't afford apartments. So this will provide those kind of apartments for them. And there'll also be a restaurant on site, uh, depending on which location is chosen, that'll have training. So people will get job training so they can then move on to other restaurants and have jobs. So the real goal here is to end homelessness and it's a permanent solution. You know, our residents and businesses have regularly said they want to see us end people's homelessness. And this is the only way to do it is through housing. The preferred choice for the property is the Ivy Palm Resort in North Palm Springs, which is at 2000 North Palm Canyon Drive. Why that property specifically? You know, this is a county project. It's not a city project. They looked at all the available hotels, motels, because that's where the state funding um, that they have access to can be used. And they really came down to three. This is the preferred one just because of the condition of the property, uh, the ability to renovate it, good outdoor space for families. You know, when I was at our shelter, our emergency shelter, I met, you know, a single mom with a six and nine year old who were living in her car. You know, that is what we can't allow to continue to happen. We need to really find a way to help folks. And the city received this grant for this specific purpose in order to convert a hotel or motel. So we're getting a lot more here than we could ever do if the county wasn't partnering and the state didn't have this grant opportunity. Now the funding from the state is not secured from the county yet. So they are applying. Once they apply, if they do get it, then it'll come back to council with really the specifics of the things we wanna see in it. You know, preference for Palm Springs and Valley residents. We wanna see a good mix of families and seniors and you know, individuals in the middle. We wanna have workforce development so people get trained in jobs so they're back in the workforce and can support themselves. So there's a lot more to this, but this was a first step and the state only gave the county a few weeks once they knew about this to move forward and apply for the grant. So that's what we agreed to, to have them move the next step and that we'd commit three million of our funding for permanent housing for homeless for this purpose. So things are moving very quickly and some business owners near the Ivy Palm say they feel blindsided by this project. Has anyone spoken with them and gotten any feedback? Uh, sure, you know, this was publicly noticed like all things that we do. And all this was, was the first step to apply for the grant. The county only got the information two and a half weeks, they told us, before this had to come to council to make sure we would invest some of our resources if this goes through. So this is a long way from a done deal, but it's a major step in the right direction. And the county is going to have a, you know, a Zoom meeting, um, as well as uh, probably one or two representatives from council to share exactly what this is with the neighborhood. I think a lot of people are visualizing this as a shelter where people are coming in and out. This is actually permanent housing. These will be apartment units that will not be operating as a hotel. So it's important that that information gets shared. Um, and this is just the first step in doing that. Switching gears, is there discussion yeah. about closing Palm Canyon to traffic to help businesses there expand into the street? Yeah, so what we did very quickly, and I actually had a meeting with the head of the state um, alcohol and beverage control to allow us to expand outdoor space for restaurants. And you can see a lot of those now in Palm Springs where they've expanded their outdoor space. So we did have a, a meeting today, Councilmember Woods and I were on it with about 70 merchants to talk about this, how it would work. Right now, people can already apply to actually use the parking spots in front of their businesses, and the city would cover the cost of the K-Rails to make them safe for people. So that'll give them even extra outdoor dining. As far as potentially closing Palm Canyon or Arenas or other roads, we had a good discussion on that, got input, and there'll be more discussions 
And eventually that's a decision that'll have to come to the whole council. So we get input, not just from the businesses, but also the rest residents in the city about that. But what's most important right now is our businesses are really struggling. And the more we can do to help them get through this, so we don't have a lot of closed businesses, we've already lost some, the better. So we want to really be there working with our businesses. And I think we had a really good, thoughtful discussion with many of our restaurants and retail today, and that con conversation will continue. I know you said you're just having conversations about this right now, yep. but if this does end up happening, what is the timeline here? How soon would Palm Canyon be closed to traffic? Um, you know, one of the proposals that came out today was just closing maybe one lane of the traffic to give restaurants on both sides a little more space. And then there was talk about maybe just closing two blocks from Tockwoods to Bristol, where there are so many restaurants to give them more space. So a lot of good back and forth. Nothing would move forward until it came to council in September. So there's still a lot of time for discussion and input on how that would move forward. And of course, when we first proposed this for discussion, a lot of the restaurants said, you know, let's wait till after the summer, but we're gonna be after the summer before long and we wanted to really get this moving. So we heard from the restaurants, we heard from the retail, how they think it'll impact them. And there are a lot of questions that we can now go research from other areas and get back to everyone. And we'll do another big Zoom meeting with residents and restaurants and retail later this month. How are things going right now with the face covering order? Have you actually started issuing citations for that? For face coverings? Um, you know, I've encouraged uh, that we do citations on it. I believe currently police and code enforcement are reminding people and they've said they've gotten very good enforcement and they're seeing much larger number of people wearing face coverings. My personal belief, I'm only one of five votes, is that we should actually be citing people now because they put other people at risk. And even though walking by each other outside is considered very, very low risk, it's not the same as being together with someone in close quarters from different households, it still is not fair to people who are doing the right thing. And with so many restaurants now taking up space on sidewalks and into streets, you know, people will stand right by where people are eating. If they're not wearing face coverings, that's really unacceptable. So a lot of our businesses have really stepped up and code enforcement has done a great job in encouraging people to do it. But I think people who violate the rules should be cited. We should enforce all the rules, not just some of them. All right, Jeff, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining sure. us. Okay, thanks for having me.